and Donna Hofmeyer discuss Donna's new book, Pandemic Parodies, The First 86 Days. Donna, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. You told me not to do it, but I have to salute you, right? Oh, Lord. <laughs> you just told me not to do it, and I just not. did it. <laughs> it's, it's my podcast. I get, I get to salute who I want to salute. <laughs> we that, won't go. That makes your day. You go for it. Makes my day. We won't go into the backstory for it. But um, so, Donna, we're talking because my understanding is that you have written another book. I wrote another book. Wow. What's it called? It's called Pandemic Parodies. Pandemic Parodies. Yeah. That sounds like an interesting book. What, what, what was the what, what brought about Pandemic Parodies? Stress relief. That's what brought it about. So in March of when did the pandemic start? 2020? It seems like forever. Yeah, 2020, yeah. yeah, forever. Right. So the, the in time 2000, before. Yeah. So spring break, we went on spring break and we went out and saw family out in like Henderson, uh, Nevada area. And when we got out there, all we saw on the news was things shutting down because of this virus. Yeah. Everything was shutting down, shutting down. So we're like, oh Lord. So, um, you know, go through spring break, have a great time, come home. In the back of my head, I'm like, I just have this really bad feeling. This might be the last good spring break for a while. <laughs> it might have been the nurse in me kind of overthinking. Right. And and so came home and went to work. Uh, I'm in the military at the time. So went to work. Thank you for your service. Yep. yep. And I'm not feeling really good. Like I, I kind of feel a little run down. And uh, I'm a nurse and we worked in an office and, and there was a doc there. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling so awesome. And he's like, you know, just go home. God knows what's going on right now, but just go home and rest up for the day. I said, yeah, probably a good idea. Told my boss, went home and little did I know that was the last day I was going to be in uniform. Wow. Like that's ever. amazing. Yeah. So wow. when I got home, like the next day, like office said, don't come back to work. My kids that went to school on base, they said, we're shutting down. We're going to be remote learning. I mean, like the world just changed in 24 hours. Right. Wow. So now I'm looking at my children, my husband, who's retired military, but also a GS worker, government service worker. Right. Um, he's at home and we're all at the table looking at each other. And like, <laughs> That's a big transition. Yeah, huge transition. So I'm a little sarcastic in nature. And the way I, I kind of relieve my stress is to is to write and, and you know, kind of be a smart aleck. So years ago, when my children were potty training, I used to write the poop report on Facebook. <laughs> it was just a laugh because potty training sucks so bad. And my cousin and I would just get a laugh out of it because we were both trying to do it with our kids. So it kind of like popped in my head, like, I should write about this and just be funny. It's a great stress relief. People will get a laugh and it might distract them even for five minutes from all the craziness. Yeah. And I came up with the name immediately, Pandemic Parodies, yep. started writing it. And then probably it was two and a half months that I wrote, 86 days that I wrote. Wow. But probably about halfway through, I'm getting these messages. Donna, I read this every morning to my husband over coffee and we just laugh. Donna, have you considered writing another book? Donna, and that's just kind of kept going from my friends and family. So I went to my editor and I said, hey, you know, they're egging me on. What do you think? And he's like, I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll do it. So I, when I retired, so that was March, right. October, well, September 30th was my last day in the military. And then I retire one October. And okay. after 21 years, you, you kind of have to figure out what to do next. Big, it's a so, big transition. Yeah. And I, I was, you know, COVID still going on. Right. Yeah. And things are kind of crazy. So I decide I'll put this in a book and I just went through and took all the Facebook posts, reformatted them. And it reads more like a journal, like a day-to-day -day journal. Okay. And it's just all our antics. Wow. And then in the midst of that, my daughter said, mom, we should have pictures. And she was nine at the time. And I said, well, you draw them. And she, we figured out how to use Google draw. And uh, she wrote all the pictures in the book. Wow. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so um, what does someone get out of reading this book? What's the experience? I mean, what, 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 you know, what is it you read the book and then kind of where do you come out the other side? So I, I'll tell you the feedback that I keep getting, which I think is interesting. People have said to me numerous times, Donna, you keep making lemon lemonade out of lemons. Like you just took this chaotic, crazy time 
and you went ahead and made this funny, relatable story. And I was like, well, I didn't make it. It existed. I just wrote it, you know? So a lot of people say relatable, especially parents, teachers. Um, That's who we dedicated the book to was the kids, the teachers, healthcare workers, um, just to say like, God, thank you. We know you went through chaos, just like we went through chaos. And honestly, the whole goal is to laugh. We just want people to laugh. And I didn't know how funny my family was until I wrote this. So yeah, <laughs> they're quite were they appreciative? Were they appreciative of the humor? They were. Okay. They were appreciative. My daughter, like it, it's written from a parent perspective. So is it for like, you know, little, little kids like elementary? I wouldn't say so, but like young adult and up, that's, that's the way the angle it's kind of written at. Okay. And so I think that, um, parents will get a kick out of it going, oh yes, we've been there. Um, grandparents and, you know, any family members, you know, did, did anything change in your writing process from the time you started to kind of in the middle where you decided it was going to be a book? Well, I had to take it from, you know, when you're writing Facebook posts, like you're not really grammatically always correct. Although (laughs) grammatics bother me like crazy. But when you're writing in a Don't read my stuff then, by the way. Say what? Don't read my stuff. (laughs) That's why I have an editor. (laughs) Home to all editors. That's what I can say. (laughs) So I had to kind of, I had to, well, a couple of things. I had to clean it up to make it obviously book readable versus Facebook lingo-y. And then the other thing, and I didn't know I did this. My, my best friend is the one that called me out. I kept making references to drinking because I was being funny, right? I was just like, Lord, we need a bottle of wine or something like that. And she says, Donna, you don't even drink as much as what you talk about. <laughs> and so I actually put disclaimers in there like, hey, look, I'm being relatable and funny. Like, I really don't drink this much. <laughs> it's a fictionalized version of drinking. Yeah. Right, right. Well, and I even put in the book, 90% of this is true. And 10% is maybe a little bit exaggerated for humor, or I just forgot and made something up in between. So wow. I, I put the disclaimer in there. Did, did the pressure to write every day change when you decided you were going to make it a book? No, because what had happened was I actually written all the posts and then I kind of stopped because what was happening is I was getting near retirement. And when you get near retirement, like it's really crazy. And again, I'm retiring during COVID. So I have to figure out how to go through my retirement stuff and not see anybody. Phone calls, emails, begging. They don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because we, we we briefly talked about it. I mean, you, you were a, a career officer. I mean, I, I was in only I was only in for four years, and even my app processing it it took two months. I mean, it yeah. took two months of paperwork and meetings and, and going mm-hmm. through because it and this was mine was much longer ago, but that they had a pro a program. Would be, there were things you could do to walk yourself through the transition, right. but it all involved going somewhere. I couldn't well, ma- yeah. imagine doing it without that. Yeah. We, I did get to go to TAP. That's the transition program. I did get to go to that, but I went to that before COVID hit. So you can go two years out. Oh, okay. And, and then as soon as I hit the button, I think I was like a year out and I went and then COVID happened right after that. So I had done that portion, Okay. but after that, it all became online. I mean, you're like stuck doing that's... it all online, but I mean, people didn't even know, they didn't know what to do with you. I was like, so how do I fill this out? Well, we'll get back to you, ma'am. Like, okay. Yeah. You know, that, that was a constant struggle. Yeah. That would be, that would, that would be, I, 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 I'm trying my best to visualize what that might've looked like and it, it I can't visualize it. So it, it was would have a, been a challenge. Yeah. In, in one sense, it was a nightmare. In another sense, stuff slid because they're like, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so and then on top, just... and then on top of that, just what you're used to doing now, all of a sudden, I mean, it's not like, I mean, transitioning to the civilian world is, is, is one thing right. but now you're sitting at home. Like you said, you're sitting at the table and you're just looking at each other and you can't go anywhere. Right. right wow. Right. Wow. So, yeah. um, so you've written, you've written, this isn't your first book was, a, and I'm, I already know the answer to this, but how, how different, what was different about the process of writing this book compared to the first book, which was a little more structured and serious. Oh, God bless it. Okay. The, the easy part was like, what so both of them are nonfiction, right so the first book is called worried patriot citizen it's a transition book for transitioning from military to civilian life i wrote that 
it was a happenstance. I swear, I call it my teaching book. And so what ended up happening was it was a, um, somebody put a message on Facebook. It was like a comment on somebody else's post. And I saw it and I, and they made the comment, veterans need a new mission. And it resonated with me. I'm like, yes, they do. Because it's very stressful to get out and not know where yeah. to go, what to yeah. do. Right. It's different. Yeah. And to find the same value, right? So wow. Let I me said, know. Let me know where yeah. that is. I'll I'll go there with you. Yeah. Correct. Right. So I said, well, yes. And then this person, the co-author, calls me up, and through conversation, like an hour and a half later, I walk upstairs to my husband. I'm like, hey, I'm writing a book. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> you're what? And I'm like, I'm gonna give it a whirl. Yeah. The okay. struggle was, I. I mean, everything I say, I'm going to tell you that I am blessed because I learned so much. The struggle was I jumped in with somebody I didn't know. Um, We had very different writing um, techniques. Our poor editor, God bless him, had to try to blend it. We didn't have similar views on certain things. And it caused this big discourse. And the end result was we... We really haven't talked since the book was written. <laughs> I have no animosity towards them, so please don't think that. No, 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 yeah. But it just didn't work. And so I am the poster child of things you shouldn't do when you're going to write your first book. Don't well, jump in with somebody that you have no idea about. And th- the problem was, is that the person had already written a book. So naturally, I thought, well, that's good. I will lean on that person and they'll teach me the ropes. Hmm. The end result was, I carried the whole baby at the end of it. I paid the entire cost. I was responsible for all the marketing. Um, yeah, everything sure. landed on me. Yeah. And as you know, David, the writing's the easy part, right? It's the after the business side that is, oh my gosh, right? Yeah. Yep. I it's lucked true. out and had people with me that just landed in my lap that took me step by step on certain things like cross the street, my neighbor at the time, um, I just happened to mention, I'm like, oh my God, I'm beating my head over trying to get this book published and known him for like six, seven months. And then just find out he used to own a small publishing company and seriously took me through copyright library of Congress. And I'm like, who gets that? Right. Yeah. So I, I really was blessed in that sense. Um, I, but I learned, like, I look back now going, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do this. And so when I wrote my second book, it was solo. Mm. Um, I had the same editor, him and I get along famously. And so he's very kind to me. He's the one that kind of helped encourage me, like you can do this. Um, and I just learned, I just kept plugging that. Is it perfect? No, not at all. I'm not going to tell you I'm selling thousands of copies. I would kill for that. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's out. And it's a long game and people have to understand that it selling is, a is a long game. It's not about the launch day. That's the fun day. And that's the exciting day. And I learned, you know, I just learned what works. The first book did nothing. The second book, I got number one new release uh, in the genre. Oh, that's and great. I actually got, even though you don't get this title, I got second bestseller. I was between two New York times. Yeah. I've, I've that was a, I've grabbed screenshots like that. It's just for me. No one will buy it, but it's like, it's yeah. like, yeah, okay. All I right. didn't get the title. And, and if people like, that's what I learned. People don't understand that those titles in the writing world don't mean squat. It's a sham. We won't go into it. It's a sham. Yes. It is a sham. Yes. It, it is. Yeah. And okay. you, have to okay. do a, you have to do a podcast on algorithms and stuff. <laughs> I, I, I did one that got took it taken down. <laughs> it was kind of close to that, but I want to wow. this just I, I, I we're running out of time. But I want to get into. You said there were some things that you learned that were different. I want to get. Can you give us a couple of specifics? Because part of the goal of this is people might you know learn. I mean, of course, we're so engaging, so they're just having a great time watching us. Oh, but they also might right. learn something. Right. So, what is a couple of things you think that you know there would be a takeaway? Takeaways. Okay. Well, shop around. Do some research. So when you're looking for like editors, I'm going to tell you if it's the biggest lesson I can teach people, editors don't know everything. And that is not a dig at editors. They'll probably thank me for this. I've said this. When I went to my editor, I was like, okay, teach me. And he knew how to edit the book and he might've known a little formatting. Mm. 
And that's it. He didn't know anything about cover artists. He didn't know anything about marketing. He doesn't know any of that stuff. Right. Those are whole right. different areas, right? right? So do your research, look around. Cheaper is not always better, but at the same time, be careful. Don't get too attached to having your name on a book. That We get into vanity publishing. Vanity. Right? I was, I was, mm. Say that word. Yep. Vanity publishing is scary. I, I'm on a couple forums and I've watched people drop upward of 60 thousand dollars for a book and yeah. only to have it not you can't recoup that you can't recoup that. yeah i mean you gotta spend 65 bucks to copyright it like you said um you need to pay for an editor you know that that's really it i mean maybe, maybe someone to help you with the cover i don't know if you full think cover i mean it, there's you know there's a lot of avenues and that's you yeah. know that's part of the reason why like i've actually started a little bit of the business that's what i want to do is to say, all right, here is the poster child for mistakes. Let me help you. Well, that's right. This is let's just let's we got to wrap it up, but let's 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 get that out there. You you actually have taken your experiences and you've turned it into um, a way that people might can go. And, you, and you're not a vicious monetizer, right? So you're not trying to no, um, no, no, no. But yeah. you're, you're trying to help people. Um, right. In some ways, just like I am, you're much more giving of your time than I am. I, I spend Tuesday afternoons recording podcasts. That's it. Um, but <laughs> that's uh, fun though. Yeah. So so what is it that you're doing? Because you're, you're doing something to help folks that might be watching this. What is that? So it's, it's essentially self-publishing coaching, not, and please don't confuse it with a writing coach an editor coach or any of that stuff. I can do some of it. Like I can look at writing and in, in some level, but my goal, and we're in the middle of beta testing this right now, but my goal is that I would coach you or I will coach you. And there will be a network that will be working with me of vetted people that have the same belief that I do, which is educating the self-publisher. You can go on forums, you can go on, you can Google stuff. And there's no place that says, I'm going to help you and stand beside you through your journey. Yeah. And we're going to talk about the options. You're going to pick the path that works for you. And we're going to work through this. Yeah. A lot of that it, stuff it is a trap. Exist. A lot of stuff is yes. a trap that, that hooks you and, and leads you into a path, a monetization path. You know, it's like, a, it's like, right. a, I don't want to, it's not as, it, it might be okay for some people, but it might not be for everybody. And you can waste a lot of money on stuff you didn't need. I don't, I well, and that's nice the whole yeah. point is like, what do you want? And how do you want to do it? Right. Yeah. And everybody has a different journey. And so like, for me, they'll pay me as a coach. But I will take no profit off of everybody that's behind me. They, they, we will actually be contracting directly with them. So, say, David, you're the editor and I'm the coach. This person comes to me. You guys are a match for editing and they will pay you directly. I take no fees in that. Right. That's now, if, I, if, I, if I'm their editor, they stand no chance. Just so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so have, you, have you come up with a name for this? Uh this concept yet we're in the works of naming it we're in the we're beta testing and we're in the works of naming it so okay. we're working hard on a a proper name for this so we don't have it quite yet okay well when you have it send it to me and i'll include it I um, will. with some of the stuff that i do so that's fantastic yeah well, well donna thank you so much for your time um it's, it's great talking to you you and i talked a little bit of uh of military before this which i enjoyed it's been a lot longer for me <laughs> out of the service than it has been for you but it's still it, it's always with you and, and like it's uh i don't know what the words are to describe you said what well, you said it's, it's a community of like-minded people and yes. it, there's that's not even really the right term but there's something about the ability to interact the ability to be sarcastic which i love but it's so hard with with out in the world, you know, to do that, yes. so that kind of stuff. You have so, to, there's so. a fine line to the sarcasm. Like you really do have to. Out here there is, and in, in there there's not. In there, no. I, I, there's. I still go back. I mean, I don't want to tell war stories. I know we could do, it, but I was in a long, long, long time ago. My life, and 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 my real last name's Lady. David Edwards, like my my pin name. So I was in the I was in the basic training, and right. they can only make you do 20 push-ups, but they would count once, twice, three times a lady for me, like. <laughs> <laughs> and and no, and I'm not kidding. I'm very proud of this. By the time I was in, I won. I did 123 push-ups in two minutes. I'm nice. like, I know it sucked. It sucked. But at the end, I'm like, I cool. did it. I did it. Yeah, it's cool. And just yeah, there's, get, there's so many things like that, you know, and it's just you get pushed to levels that you're really not sure. You don't even realize you can. You, do. you don't realize you can. But then once you do. Mm -hmm. it, it, you carry that with you it, 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 as a base confidence in all, every situation, you know, from that. Um, yeah, well, especially when you come out into the civilian world. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
when you transition yeah. out, I mean, that's really all my back experience is what led me to this, you yeah. know? And, yeah. and so all, all the bad things that happened, I say bad, but you know, all those learning experiences, you know, you now can come through and boom, you know, yeah. put out something that that's of value. Yeah. No, you have, you, you have that underlying confidence, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, my, my military radar went up when we started talking. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, Donald, look, it's a pleasure to talk to you. We'll, we'll I'll follow up with you some more. When you get this business going, let me know. And we'll I see will. where things Thank go. Thank you. I really appreciate the time. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button.